All right, let's try again. <laughs> Can you hear me now? All right, I'm going to wait for you guys to come on. I just had to end my video due to some technical difficulties, but hopefully you guys will find me over here and you'll be able to hear me this time. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to sign on. Um, but I wanted to talk today about the missing ingredient in fertility because I know that so many of you guys feel like you're doing so many things and you are, you're doing a lot of things. I feel like I'm in the shadows here. Let me see, is this better? <laughs> I, I just needed to be outside. It's been so crazy, crazy, crazy day and I needed to get some fresh air. So um, let me know, can you hear me? If you guys are out there and you're able to hear me this time, definitely let me know. And it's always really helpful for me to know if you're watching this live, you can give me a little hashtag live. If you're watching this on a replay, a hashtag replay will help. And as always, I hope that you will share this with anybody you know who is experiencing any kind of fertility issue. Uh, one of the things I always want to work on is kind of getting people out of feeling like they're isolated because I know that infertility can tend to be a really isolating thing and I don't want that to be the case anymore. I'm gonna turn on the light. Um, can you guys, let's see. Can you guys give me a little thumbs up or a little hi if you can hear me because I was signed in before and a few people were telling me they could not hear me. So if you're able to hear me, can you wave hello? Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, Diane, Diane. <laughs> can you hear me? I'm assuming you can hear me because nobody's saying they can't hear me. Okay. So this is an important topic. Hey, Rana. All right. Awesome. We're back. The technical stuff always like freaks me out <laughs> and I have to like get into the groove of this because I'm definitely not a technical person. So uh, this is my edge, which is a good edge to be up against because it's 2020. Um, hopefully you guys are all taking care of yourself today. I know there's a lot of chaotic, crazy energy out there. I have not turned on the news today, which is good. Um, I will try not to until like noon tomorrow, but I probably will fail on that. Um, so, like I was saying, if you're here live, can you do a little hashtag live? If you're watching this on a replay, hashtag replay. Always let me know like what times work best for you. And as always, share this with someone who can benefit from it. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys today about the missing ingredient in fertility work. And this is a really important topic and you've probably heard me talk about it before. And I will just say, that if you've watched my video about um, getting pregnant after 40, have any of you watched watch that video? That, hey, awesome, awesome. Okay, hi, Taisha, thank you for that. Um, this topic, this ingredient is important if you are trying to get pregnant over 40. This topic is important, this missing ingredient often comes into play in diagnoses like endometriosis, high FSH, unexplained infertility, PCOS, fibroid, you name it, it's a part of it. Um, this missing ingredient, you might have heard about if you've been following my four cycle phase approach. Can anyone guess what it is? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, I don't wanna be mean. So this missing ingredient is yin. And so many of you probably heard this because I talk about yin during my four phase approach, the yin phase is when the follicles are developing. That said, yin is actually really important during every phase. And while I could talk about what yin is for hours and hours and hours, I, and I will to some extent, um, on a very, very basic level, yin is like the fluid metabolism of our body. You know, we have the yin is the fluid that makes up our blood, that nourishes our follicles. You know, it's like it's like the moisture in our mouth, that is yin, it's our cervical mucus. And even though we are really focusing on nourishing that during the yin phase, of course, when our follicles are growing, it's important during every single phase. Hi, Sonia. 
So during the blood phase, the yin is actually the substance that fills the blood, that makes the blood liquid. And the energy of yin is one that is so hard to kind of explain and grasp because it has nothing to do with the doing. You know, it's not about doing. So yin energy is very receptive and flowing. It's a what much more like what we would consider feminine energy. And I try not to be gendered with this, like yin and yang, but the yin tends to be what we um, perceive more as more feminine qualities. And so it kind of makes sense in our culture that yin tends to be what's kind of lacking because the yin, these qualities of like, I don't even want to say like passivity because that has like negative connotations, but just like receptivity. We live in a very like productivity, valued, focused um, society. And some of us are working like multiple jobs. How many of you guys have more than one job? I'm just curious about that. Or how many of you consider yourself as having like a high stressed life? Nobody's responding. <laughs> um, yin energy is nothing that we can do. The yin is about flowing. And it's funny because I give you a lot of tools and techniques to your, nourish your yin. Like these are different yin nourishing teas and herbs you could drink. And then during the yin phase, I'm often telling you like, take a bath or do a yoni steam or like do the womb massage. And these are all things that you can do to nourish the yin, but it's almost like a trick of like trying to get you there because really a, a yin energetic, like if we're taking a bath and we're all stressed out in the bath or we're like, you know, massaging our womb, but we're like worried about not getting it right, we're not actually nurturing our yin. So like I said, during the blood phase, um, we need the yin for our blood to release. We need that yin to be flowing for our energy to release and let go. <laughs> like like I'm always talking about this metal elements like release you need to release and let things go we can't do that if we're like controlling everything right um so in order to have healthy blood phase energy we need our energy to be flowing our yin to be like passive and receptive enough that it'll let our body release and so if we're not doing that we could often get things like and like blood phase issues like terrible pcos or cramp i mean um PMS or cramping or endometriosis or fibroids issues with the blood. Now you often hear me talk a lot about, oh my God, you guys are all saying your life is stressed. So first of all, I feel you, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. And I, I, I like want you to, I want to tell you that I'm like getting teary eyed because like I get it. Like so many women come to me and they're so stressed out and like I understand. And it's not fair to, for me to be like, just relax like that's you know like f you right? like if i was like just relax but i get it so i always try to think about ways that we can introduce this energy um, and i've talked about that in videos before um but i get it and i just want to say that i practice it every day and it doesn't come easy to me too like right now i'm actually um about to release something that's super exciting and you guys may have been hearing me talk about it um, but I've been working on it for like five years, you know, and it's really, really hard to put out there because we want it to be perfect and control everything and control the way it goes. And like, I'm completely with you. But the thing about our energy is that if we don't let things flow, we get stuck, you know. So I've been in this place where I'm like, yeah, it's really to be perfect. You know, I'm not ready to release it. But that gets me really stuck. So at some point, I just have to release it. And that's going to come out soon. So be sure to go to FertileLikeAMother.com if you want to be on the VIP list. That's a little shameless plug for it. But it's actually true. Like, I really um, found myself getting stuck. And that's the thing. When we're not letting our, our yin flow, there's no place for it to go. So it gets stuck. And so that were, might be where we get something like endometriosis or fibroids. Now, during the yin phase, I talk about the yin a lot, obviously, because that's the yin phase. That's where we're like moistening our follicles and we're kind of building up our cervical mucus. Um, but it's interesting because I had someone ask me about, um, yes, yeah, someone said their chakras are blocked because of it. It's true. We get really blocked if our energies are not flowing. You know, I think of yin as almost like the river of energy that flows through our body. And I actually visualize it as a river. You know, it makes our blood flow. 
And if things are not flowing, we get stuck. So I had someone ask me about PCOS because they were like, well, PCOS, I talk about it like dampness, right? In your body. So that's almost like an overabundance of this yin. So people often say, well, then I don't need more yin. But the thing is, we still need to focus on our yin energy because that can be an indication that our yin is getting stuck and then we're just accumulating yin. Our like water metabolism isn't flowing. The same with high FSH. It's kind of the opposite. Like our yin energy gets stuck, so we end up getting dry in places. And often with high FSH, we'll find that we're dry, but then we also have dampness in other places. So that's where it can get to be a little like bound up. Um, so without, you know, yin in our yin phase, we might not have healthy follicles. Um, without yin in our chi phase, which is when we ovulate, we might not have that release of energy we need to ovulate. So if our yin energy is not flowing, we're not building up the yin, we don't have that energy to then release the, the follicle. And then the thing with the yang phase um, is that we need yin to be substantial enough to kind of hold the yang, like from the yin is where we get the yang. And we kind of think of like estrogen and progesterone sometimes as separate things, but they actually flow together to make the whole of our kind of hormonal body. You know, yin and yang, they're not two separate things. We need both to be flowing kind of uh, synchronistically so that we can have this whole hormonal balance. Um, and during the yang phase, we actually need the yin so our, our uterus can get like thick enough you ever like get your uterus tested and the lining is not thick enough or we need that trilaminal that three layer lining that often so many women aren't getting because of this missing yin element um now i can tell you what yin does and it is so hard to tell you how to get there and i get that a hundred percent um and this is where the work gets really important um, because so many of you are like, oh, hello. Um, so many of you are like, just tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. And I get that completely. And that's why I want to tell you what to do, like which teas to drink every day, when you could do the soak, when you could do this, that, moxa, the other thing. There's so many things you could do. But at some point, there's kind of this understanding of like you have everything you need and there's just a sense of like letting go and release and trust. Um, I'm just looking at those of you guys over there. Hello, hello. Can you guys um, let me know what you do to nourish your yin and maybe what you've learned from watching some of my videos because I know I've talked about it a lot. and. I'm always so amazed by like how much you guys know um, and that's why I felt like it was important to talk about this because I go over to my my Facebook group and there's women asking questions about like when to, and I don't even I don't even have to answer anymore like you guys know so much and you're drinking the teas exactly when you should and I I get that you kind of want these like specifics um, and there are specifics but there's also like at some point, it's just like this kind of um, resting into yourself. So the things that I do to nourish my yin are like take a bath, which is why I put bath soaks in every um, cycle phase, because being in water, you know, yin has to do with the water element. And it's very hard to be stressed and uptight when we're in water. You know, there's a way that like our body absorbs, our cells absorb the water and we almost have like no no choice but to nobody wants to tell me what they do to relax <laughs> does that mean you guys are not doing anything to relax no <laughs> i'm gonna start being hard on you um i also say it's really important to go to bed by 10 o'clock at night and i understand that some of you have jobs where you like work the late night shift um but the sleep that we get before a midnight is is much more yin nourishing so if we go to bed by 10 o'clock by nine o'clock is i know some of you are like that's not possible but if you can that sleep tends to be more yin nourishing and we can tend to go into a deeper sleep um stress i know that like hearing like um don't stress is something that makes people mad <laughs> so but the cortisol level strike this cortisol level release and spike that we get when we're stressed out really impacts our yin energy so as much as possible 
um, nourishing our yin and not allowing for that cortisol spike is important. So doing like yoga, yin yoga. And again, these things are not things that I want you to add as like, um, you know, oh God, I got to get my self-care in. Like I hear that, like so many people are like taking self-care as just another thing to do. And it's not actually like a time that they can allow their body to re relax into this. And this is one of the reasons that I am reading your guys' comments as I'm talking at the same time. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, someone just said they saw some improvement in taking the teas. Um, yeah, and so there's, you know, all of the teas for every phase have some yin nourishing herbs in there. So taking the teas absolutely does nourish your yin, but also the things that we do see this is why it gets really hard to talk about it right because it's like not what you're doing it's how you are it's like this deep letting go almost which is really really hard for women to do especially if we don't have like a safe environment to do so um so that's one of the things i'm talking about in this new thing that is my baby that i'm about to share and i really um really love you guys and I want you guys to be the first to know about it so head over to Fertile Like a Mother because there's going to be um, so much of this and so much more um, I'm reading about you take baths or you sage your stuff that's awesome um, working out is great the massage on the tummy is so well getting your hands on your body and even just like you know yin is grounding energy whereas like yang is like up and out and sunny and dancing and bright yin is like in your body getting yourself into your body it's like the substance of your body. So even just like stroking your body every morning, like your face, your neck, your breasts, your butt, like just getting your energy into your body can help you get grounded. I like to visualize my, like put my feet planted on the ground and almost visualize roots going down into the earth. And then from those roots, roots absorbing up like nourishment and nurturing from the earth and abundance. Um, okay. I could talk about yin energy forever and ever and ever, um, but I have to run. I have like a few minutes to answer a couple questions. I'd like to focus on the yin questions because this is a topic that is, it's really hard to teach, you know, um, because it's so much not about the doing, you know, when it comes to like, this is the tea you drink when, and this is the food to eat when, and this is what to do. That's easy for me. This is like, I've really been kind of exploring how to share this more. Um, I'm gonna put in the comments, actually I'm gonna comment now. I would love for you guys to get on my VIP, very important pregnancy list for this thing that's happening that um, is a lot for me about just letting it go too. Um, but I feel like it's gonna have, I, I hear all of you talking about like your different um, diagnoses, endometrios endometriosis, PCOS, high FSH, unexplained infertility. Um, and I really want to be able to, I wanted to create something that could kind of get all of you in, in there and, and support you. You know, even if you've been diagnosed with something and your doctor told you, you might not be able to have a baby. Um, I've created this thing that I am so excited to share. So I'm going to put it in the comments now, fertile, like, uh, mother.com. So I can't tell you exactly what it, someone just says, what is it? Um, it's, I'll be able to share in two weeks. I'm still kind of not supposed to talk about it, but I can't help myself. Um, I just don't want to like jinx it. I'm a little bit, um, superstitious. So, um, the fertile like a mother is actually just the vip list and then that means that once this thing that is happening comes out you'll be the first to know and the first to sign up and there'll be lots of extra bonuses for just the vip list so head over there um this was great to talk to you guys okay oh how to unblock my fallopian to fall okay foods during the flick here so foods that can help with yin energy, that's a good question. I'm going to stick to the yin phase ones. Um, so goji berries are really good for nourishing your blood. Um, they're actually in the um, fertile mama tea as well as pomegranate seeds. Things that are astringent um, that make you like pup pucker, that's why pom pomegranate is good because it like holds in moisture. So you don't want to do things that are like drying. You want to avoid like overly spicy foods or overly fatty like um fried foods, but actually fats, like good fats, healthy fats 
um, are actually really good for you. So like nuts and seeds, um, different kinds of like, um, don't use the omega-6 oils because those can tend to be inflammatory, but you'll want to do like coconut oil or olive oil. Um, those tend to be better, flax oil, omega-3 oils. Um, tend to be more yin nourishing as opposed to omega-6 oils, which can be a little inflammatory. Um, olives are good. Um, like like dark fat, like um, duck meat is actually really good. And like the dark meat of the chicken as opposed to the white meat of the chicken. Um, I actually don't, I used to be a vegetarian for 12 years. Vegetarianism is actually tends not to be that great for yin, especially if we're bleeding regularly. Like for women, we're bleeding regularly. Often we need the minerals and the supplement the like vitamins that are in animal proteins to replenish our yin so often i get a lot of women who have been like hardcore vegetarian for a lot of years the raw food diet is really 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 hard for fertility so i don't recommend that um vegetables are good like leafy green vegetables cucumbers are great for nourishing the yin um the celery juice fast you know like not the fast but um people are starting to drink celery juice um, it's kind of like this medical medium thing, but it's actually really good for help the salts in it, help your body nourish the yin, and they also are great for detoxification. So, alrighty, I am at my time limit, but um, it's re always really good to talk to you guys. I hope you guys are taking good care of yourself. There's a lot of craziness out in the air. I hope that you will share with me the things that you do and share with the other women who... Um, can maybe use some tips about how you support your yin. As always, if you could share this with a woman who might be struggling with one of these things like endometriosis or PCOS or unexplained infertility, um, I just like to take the stigma away from it, from talking about it honestly and sharing about it. So I hope that you share it with people. And um, as always, if you can let me know what times work best for you, if you do hashtag live, then that helps me know that this is a good time for you. If you do hashtag replay, maybe you could also let me know what days work well for you. And if you have anything you want to know more about, any topic that is of interest to you, I always want to give you what you need. So um, let me know for sure. I have to go run and feed my family, <laughs> but I will see you all soon. Bye.